The Trump Foundation announced earlier today it will be shutting down amid allegations it misused assets for personal gain. In this season of giving, we thought we'd look at strategies to help make informed decisions about where to donate. How can you make sure the money you're giving is working to do a good job? Here with thoughts on how to choose a charity wisely is Dean Carlin. He's professor of economics and finance at Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Management and founder of the non Profit Innovations for Poverty Action. Much of Professor Carlin's work involved using evidence-based research to evaluate effective charitable giving. Dean Carlin, welcome to Chicago Tonight. First of all, tell us about your work. Just give, us, give me the elevator summary of what you do. Sure. Um, so there's two parts to what we do. The first part is to, we do a lot of work around the world and in the United States to try to measure what is the impact of programs. Programs run by nonprofits, programs run by government. Um, re requires a lot of field work and, and setting up in a lot of instances randomized control trials to actually measure scientifically what is the consequence the, of, of a program. Who, how is it impacting people's lives? Um, and so the second part? The second part is th things like this. Things like, okay, so we get all this evidence, but how does it actually change policy? How does it change donors? How does it change nonprofits? How does it change government? And we work to get that information into the hands of people who can actually do something about it. Okay, so you advise donors and institutions on the best use of their money, where their money actually makes a difference. And uh, earlier you came up with, uh, earlier today, you came up with seven strategies, more or less, where individuals can, mm -hmm. uh, can maybe get some advice, uh, some insights into how to donate and let's take a look at them number one don't fall for the overhead myth number right. two don't be swayed by marketing materials three ignore outputs instead focus on outcomes if you're wondering where your money will have the most impact it is in third world countries don't be afraid to give to large organizations email charity for outcome data and don't be afraid to give to meta charities let's go for the first one because uh, sure. this overhead myth because yeah. so oftentimes you hear uh, a pitch from a charity and say our overhead is so low it only constitutes four percent of uh, of our of our costs right. why is that uh, why is that not persuasive so let me give you the bit, the simplest analogy i can to kind of help help motivate it which is what when you go to a restaurant uh, if you decide you like the food and you want to go back do you care how the food was, um, like how much the food costs and how much the labor costs and how much the rent costs and how much these things cost? No, you just care about the product. And did you like it? Same thing when you buy a car. You don't really care how much the parts car cost and the labor. You care about whether you like the car. Charity is not any different. You don't really have to care how, how, the, how the sausage is made. What you care about is you put money in to a charity, what comes out? What's the impact? And some things just cost more to manage than other things. And so sometimes you'll see an organization with higher overhead it's actually a better organization. Number two, don't be swayed by marketing materials. Uh, expand on that. So what, what's meant by that, and I and want to make a caveat that you know some good marketing does bring out the the good in us in a lot of situations, and so that's great, and I'm not critical of that at all. Um, but what we do see is that sometimes the the emotional appeal of a marketing appeal might actually bring us to action, but then we should try to use our head to choose our charity. Uh, the next one is look for evidence of impact. I misread the uh, first time we saw this graph. Uh, what do you mean by that? So what I mean by that is that it's really easy for an organization to tell a story. In fact, it's a little bit like what you might see in that second point about good marketing. It tells a story about an individual who was a part of a program and how their life um, changed after receiving services from a program. But that doesn't tell you that the program actually caused those things to happen. And that's a much trickier thing to get. And and you know, that's not usually the, what the nonprofits report. So, you also uh, make the argument that one's money has more impact in poorer countries as opposed to uh, donating to someplace here in the United States. Um, how's that? So, you know, it, it starts with a basic question, and, and and people can be of two types on this. And so, I'm not passing judgment one way or the other. But if someone says that what they care about is simply doing the most good with their money for the most number of people, period. Right? And they don't care about the citizenship of the person. They don't care about, you know, they just literally care about just how much good can they do and how much change can they make in someone's lives. Well, then the reality is the poverty is worse overseas and the impact of a dollar is more overseas. And so if that's the objective function is just doing the most good you can with the money you're donating, 
then the most um, effective charities are overseas. The next one is particularly interesting, interesting because you say that uh, uh, don't be reluctant to give to large and small organizations. A lot of people might think, oh, here's a, here's a community-based organization. Uh, it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not the United Way or mm -hmm. some big uh, UNICEF or something like that. Maybe I should give to a smaller one instead of the big, the big outfit. Why, yeah. why give to a big outfit? So, um, so I actually don't even, I, I, to be honest, I don't care about size in the sense of, you know, charity. So I, you know, I've seen good charities that are both good and both big and small. Um, why might a big one might be better? Because they actually have the money to invest in choosing good programs and, and making sure they're doing a good job. Um, whereas a small organization sometimes doesn't have the resources to really pay that attention to detail to make sure they're getting it right. I'm not saying big is better, right? I'm just saying that's not a metric I would use to um, choose a charity, big or small. Another thing you recommend is to email a charity requesting evidence of cost effectiveness. Isn't it kind of complicated for a lay person to look at, uh, to look at you know, data that, uh, that the charity might have? This one's maybe a pipe dream, I'll be honest, right? But I would love a world of which, in which nonprofits are reporting more evidence of their impact. And one way to get there is with, with donors demanding it. Now, I'm not saying that you can just email a charity and they'll just email you back um, the evidence of impact. In fact, they might not have it. But the more and more the donors start demanding this of charities, uh, the better the world will have. And uh, you also talk about uh, not being afraid to give to meta charities, and those are charities that uh, those are nonprofits that evaluate and support other charities. And for example, the nonprofit that you started uh, is an example of a meta charity. But uh, uh, real quick, there is one uh, there is one organization that people can go to, and uh, who's that? Real quickly. So there's there's a few, and I'm not, so there's GiveWell is a group. There's a group called Life You Can Save. There's a group that I started called Impact Matters that is doing domestic um, nonprofits. And they actually give uh, recommendations as they, to... They do, they do give recommendations. They name, they name charities and try to estimate the cost effectiveness of different charities. Dean Carlin, thank you so much. Timely advice. Thank you.